morning and welcome to GC365. I'm Cami Barker and we are on day 243, August 31st. I want to welcome my guest. Introduce yourself. My name's Kirk Carlson. And he's not nervous at all. Not at all. <laughs> Kirk, tell my friends what it is that you do. You have a you have a your own business. Yeah, uh, yeah. I own a waterproofing and drainage company. Um, my kids pretty much run that for me, and then I'm the recovery pastor here at Gold Creek Community Church. And what in the world is a recovery pastor? A uh, guy who messed up his life for a <laughs> long time. Um, uh, I'm just a person that went through some troubles with drugs and alcohol, and um, got 13 and a half years clean and sober now, and was oh, asked to. Awesome. Uh, to come on board as a recovery pastor. And so uh, I'm not really sure what all that entails at this point. At some point, I plan on getting a Celebrate Recovery started here. But right now, I'm just, uh, we just have a six AA meetings going that um, is close to my heart because that's how I got sober. So, yeah. So, seven o'clock every night at um, Gold Creek Mill Creek campus, uh, we have a recovery program going on. Yep. Thank you for doing that. That's you a bet. huge impact to our community. Uh, it's, it's, that's what I do. It's been fun getting to know Kirk, and I look forward to talking about the Bible with you. So let's kind of jump in a little. Hey. Um, we had Job, which Job, we're, we're kind of hitting the tail end of Job. We've had a lot of ranting of friends. They've talked a lot to Job. Job's done a little talking. What were your take on, what'd you get out of Job? Well, I got basically got out of, out of this reading that uh Job was kind of irritated um, with how things were going in his life. He felt that they were undeserved. Yeah. Um, and uh, Elihu and um, then finally God himself, you know, kind of even sarcastically told him, you know, what, do you know this? Do you know that? Did you do this? Did you do that? So that part was fascinating to me. He brings up everything from the water to the darkness to little tiny details about a ton of different animals. And I was like, it was sarcastic, though. Yeah. 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 Really? Really? Do you doubt me? Why are you doubting me? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, something that stood out to me was the whole constellation discussion that they had. Did that, you know yeah. what I'm talking about? Yeah, I actually put a note in my Bible on that because, I don't know, ignorance, whatever, but um, I just kind of thought, like the clouds, when we look up in the sky, we see a cloud, we say, hey, that looks like a rabbit or that right, looks right. like a clown. Um I thought that's what we did with the stars. Hey, that looks like a tea kettle, or that looks like a bear, or that right. looks. But then in this yeah, reading, a there's a smaller one. Yeah, yeah, and in this reading, I went, wait a minute, he actually made the bear and the cubs going yeah. across the sky, and stuff. So it was just another little way, that, little nugget that God could show me that He was really involved in actually everything. Yeah, and to me, it was okay. Greek mythology, we learn about this in school. Like, okay, it's up there. People kind of made it up, or or they're worshiping it to some degree and and God puts it in the Bible and says, no, I did that. Yep, I got this. Yeah. And I think it's very cool. Uh, and it stood out to me. Um, okay, that's really all that I have on Job. You got anything else? No, okay. I'm good. Second Corinthians? Second Corinthians. Okay, what you got on there? What what stood out to you? This is Paul, he's working, working hard. He's served the Lord and he's got this, he's worn out physically and He's, he talks about how, yeah, but it's all worth it for the glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord, the weight of the glory of the Lord is heavy on him. So he's, he's pushing hard for what, what people can't see. The, the couple things stuck out to me in, in, Corinthians, um, in Corinthians. And it was one where he says, we grow weary in our present bodies and we long to put on our heavenly bodies like new clothing. Um, it's kind of like putting off my past and 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 uh, accepting the the new and I guess so. I'm not I'm not concerned when I go to heaven. I, I and sometimes I would like to go there sooner. <laughs> right. Um, it's just. Uh, <laughs> but down at the bottom it says so. Whether we are here in this body or away from this body our goal is to please him that's the bottom line for me um i just need to do what's what's asked of me by him and it's you know or by his servants by whoever whatever authority he has put me under for that season of my life um i just need to do that because it's what i'm supposed to do personally for me i get mixed up in my head in between my ears there's a lot of confusion and um 
I'll be given a testimony and it'll be heartfelt. And then all of a sudden, for whatever reason, pride, which <laughs> have, happens. there's no reason I should have any, oh. um, but pride will well up in me and it'll just screw up my head and, and stuff. So I've just learned that I'm supposed to serve God. I'm supposed to do what's asked of me and I'm supposed to serve others and help others. And so I just do that because I know it's what I'm supposed to do and I can't worry about what my motive is because if I start doing that, then I get all screwed up and I don't take care of anything. So I just need to, I need to do what it says here. Our goal is to please him. That's the only reason I'm sitting here. <laughs> Kingdom driven. <laughs> yes. And I appreciate that you are here <laughs> just for my asking. Um, okay. So I'm going to read second Corinthians five. Uh Oh, oh yeah. Five ten. for we must all stand before Christ to be judged. We, will each receive whatever we deserve for the good or evil we have done on in this earthly body. So same thing that you kind of pointed out. Same thing. I guess I'm doing the right thing. I got a lot of good stuff to make up uh, for the bad stuff I did so that I can be on the right end of that weight. We all do. We <laughs> all Amen. absolutely do. Absolutely. Okay. Cr going into Psalms, we've got David crying out here and wanting help, needing help. And, uh, and then a few verses later, he's all of four verses later, he's saying, oh, but we trust you, God. We trust you, God. And this always stands out every time that I do a GC365, that there's the crying out and there's the, but I trust you. I trust you. And in our discussion I, just this morning, we talked about that. Yeah, I've found myself sometimes kind of saying the same thing. Rise up, help us, ransom us because of your unfailing love. I trust God so mm -hmm. much. Um, something happened with one of my employees recently. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just had to cry out, God, I trust you so much, but I understand you so little. I don't know why some things happen. Right. Um, but I do know he has an unfailing love. And I do know that regardless of what happens, I can count on him. Yes. It's just, it just doesn't always come out the way I think it should. It's so true. So true. I love it. Thank you for being honest there. Okay. Proverbs. We're almost done. How you doing? Uh, great. Um, <laughs> yeah, that one is just kind of bypasses me. I mean, where I'm at in my life right now with kind of what I've shared, I can't be lazy. I, um, so let me read it really quick for okay. those that haven't read it. It says the lazy person claims there's a lion out there. If I go outside, I might be killed. Um, like I said earlier, I can't, I can't ponder that in my head. I, I can't think about it. If there's a lion out there, I mean, I get the context. If it's like, don't be lazy get off your rear and go do what you're supposed to do. Yes. You will not believe how good my voice has been right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, anyhow. Uh, so don't be but, lazy. Yeah. So don't be lazy. But even so, even if there really was a lion out there, I can't contemplate what's going to be, you know, is it going to be okay or not? If it's at my house, it's jeopardizing my family. I just got to go out there. I, I have a bad tendency sometimes to act before I think. Well, it's interesting because where we live, there's there's bears that are every now and again walking through backyards. And it's like, oh, get your kids inside. Get your cats and dogs inside. And it's like, yeah, that's scary. But then I think about everybody in Yellowstone. They're like getting as close to the bears as they possibly can to get a picture. It's, yeah. it's just different and mentalities. We have, that. we have that. I have seven acres up in Marysville. Oh, yeah, you've got some animals that go through. Uh, coyotes and deer and eagle and bear and all kinds of weird stuff that comes roaming through there. Right. So. And so you can't live in fear. But, oh, yeah. but they're not likely to come and attack you. No. You could easily say, no, I'm just going to stay right here. That's why I have big dogs. Oh, big dogs help. Big <laughs> dogs help. All right. Well, thank you for your time. Thank, thank you. you for listening and watching. We appreciate you. And um, just pray that you're encouraged this morning. Thank you.